I'm Elle, I just put this shirt on, and I'm already covered in cat hair. And I am the masked luchador, El Susmano, the Susman, Rick Sussman. You are watching The Read Pile. This week, sponsored by Barbershop Window, POW. It is May 1st, and here is some comic book news you can use. And it is good news. Specifically, it is great news. We have got ourselves a Justice League movie coming out in 2018. What? What? I don't care. You don't care? I, I don't care. It's... Is it 2001? No, it's... Tw okay, it's coming out in 2018. And it, oh. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's the Justice League. It's coming out. It's going to happen. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. It, Are you sure? Well, I mean, you know. I thought there was a movie already being made. Well, that's that's Man of Steel two, and and well, oh, it's technically not okay. Man of Steel I'm two. Sorry, it's I'm... the unnamed second Superman project. Yeah. I'm confused. Okay. No, it's but it, but it's Justice League. How can you not care about Justice? Well, when does it debut? Twenty eighteen, sometime. Okay. And how many times will it be delayed before then? There's no knowing, okay. um, but this is big news. Are you not excited? How many Spider-Mans have we seen since oh, then? Okay, okay, so, we've seen we've seen all of Sam Raimi's okay. Spider-Man, and in the time that it's taken for a Justice League movie to be announced, okay. um, we've also seen all of Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man in the time that it's taken a Justice League to be announced. We we've we've seen all of Captain America's and Winter Soldiers's and and X-Men's and. And Batman's got rebooted in that time period as well. I'm starting to see your point, but but it's big news. I don't care. Let's let's do some reviews. Okay. It's Elle again, and here is my read pile. Uh, I'm going to start off with the Wonderful World of Lisa Simpson. I was a little disappointed. Um, I'll first off, I'm going to tell you that I am one of the Simpson um, people that are not very happy with the last four seasons of the, the series. Uh, so when I started to read this comic, I was a little happy to, to read a story about the Simpsons, wanted to see somebody else's view of Lisa Simpson, maybe her world. I, unfortunately, each story was kind of eh, blah, just like the current series on TV right now. Uh, but the closest one, believe it or not, didn't know until after I had read it and gone back, Gail Simone's story was actually the closest to Lisa Simpson's character. Uh, so I was a little happier with that one, but overall it was kind of um, tossed to the ground. Alright, next we have Batgirl. I went ahead and got back on board. I'm a little behind on the Batgirl series um, since the reboot, so doing a little catch up. Uh, I am very happy that Barbara Gordon is back, of course, uh, but I did get a little delayed. So I hopped back on with the annual when that came back. Very happy to see that Poison Ivy was involved. Love the character. I was really excited to see that they had a little bit of an insight with her, uh, kind of got into the mind of Poison Ivy, how she felt. I was a little weirded out though with her mood changes. You'll understand if you read it though. Uh, you'll you kind of get into it when you get to the page uh, that I'm talking about, you will know. I, I, I literally had to stop reading, look up to the sky and wonder why I was still reading it. But I continued and I was a little happy. Uh, so I will continue to read Batgirl. I'm going to go back, kind of do a little catch up. I'm going to see how this goes. I love the character, um, but I was a little weirded out by the storyline in this issue. Uh, you can check it out. Let me know how you feel. I don't want to give too much away, but you'll know what I mean when you read it. <laughs> uh, but I am very excited. Oh, oh, hello. I'm sorry. Buster wants to say hi. Move along, sir. Thank you. Anyway, uh, I am very excited though to introduce Alex and Ada. I found this, uh, I actually read the first issue quite a while back when it first came out, uh, but I went back and started rereading it again. Uh, it basically is in a world of where androids exist living with people, uh, and you know, it's it's not a very exciting storyline. It doesn't 
you know, oh, you know, there's all this going on, you know, there's wars and there's all these things to, to worry about. It's just from the point of view, normal life of a guy named Alex. Uh, he, his girlfriend just left him. It's kind of a blah every day in the first issue, but it's not boring. It's not boring at all. Uh, somehow they, they pulled it off going talking about this guy and he is introduced to this android that his grandmother of all people bought him to kind of replace his old girlfriend uh, and of course you know with my dirty thoughts my first thing is okay when are they gonna do it this is probably what's gonna happen uh, it's gonna be all about them getting busy it's not it it's really touching to see him build a relationship with this android and I'm not quite sure I'm still sh I'm gonna continue to read I can't tell if it's just more of the androids are not accepted in the world yet overall or is it more of a point of view from him he doesn't feel comfortable with it so that caught my interest I want to know more about this world I want to know how how integrated are these androids into the world? They do mention a couple of world events here and there where they are, you know, involved. I don't want to spoil anything because I'm sure those things are going to come up later on in the series. But I do recommend it. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, I I think it's really going to catch on. It, it's not, don't be afraid. It's not boring about the day-to-day -day life. It's very interesting to learn their relationship together and as it builds. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my read pile and apparently uh, Buster is satisfied. Thank you again for those awesome reviews, Miss L. Let's start talking about the stuff that I read on my read pile this week. Oh, another hefty stack because of course I also have more e-reading that I got done, uh, made courtesy of the fellows over at The Illuminerdy. Uh, Jesse, uh, can we get a graphic here, here, around here? Here, let's get a graphic around here for The Illuminerdy. Yeah, did. Come on, Jesse, it's a graphic. Wait, I know, right there. that work? Fine. All right. Go check out what the Illuminati has to say. Follow them on Twitter, at the Illuminati. They're the most indie of indie projects right now because they are uh, just debuting things on the net. Their first book, uh, or the one that's available, I don't know if it's their first, I don't mean to be rude, uh, is called The Mad Monk. There's only about five pages of it available, but it's 100% free. It looks like a comic book. It's drawn to look like a comic book. It reads like a comic book. And it has a very cool Warren Ellis gravel style uh, like warrior magician kind of storyline going on in the first five pages like a a modern take on Rasputin definitely want to check it out you can't beat the price and helping out local and, and, and young artists is always a good way to go for our industry so let's get to the big hitters first thing I want to talk about is trade paperback numero 11 for Attack on Titan if you haven't been following Attack on Titan on the Netflix or the YouTubes or the Hulus go ahead and do that I'll pause Okay, you should have seen all of it by now, and it is awesome. It is a really, really, really good manga, probably the best manga to come out in years, um, and anime as well. The anime picks, uh, picks up the story at essentially book one, and when you're done with the anime, you're at book eight. So this is book 11, and the storyline just moves really, really good. We still, as you can see, have uh, we got Armored Titan V Aaron going on on the cover there. Big stuff awesome awesome trade uh, volume 12 actually debuted this week so I might be doing another review for Attack on Titan next week uh, next up we have mr. John Lehman and Rob whose last name I'm not going to butcher on national international TV but chew number 41 this is the start of their uh, next storyline that takes place after family recipes uh, it is another fantastic issue if you're not reading chew just so you know it is a probably the best dark comedy in comics right now. It is the only book I've ever read in my entire life where the the art and the writing work so well together on a comedic basis. And just because I like to spoil things from time to time, we have a gigantic awesome image here of El Pollo versus Unisaurus Rex. 
And more importantly, if you look on Unisaurus Rex, there's a little bitty tattoo that says Ian Malcolm Rules. And if you don't get that reference, you can't be a friend of mine. Next up on the read pile, the book of the week for a lot of people, Southern Bastards number one. Not my pick of the week. In fact, I'm not going to be reading this. Um, I'm from the South. Hi. I lived in Florida my entire life. Hi. I understand that there are a lot of people out there that think that this is awesome and that it's fabulous. Here's the problem, though. Jason Aaron is a marvelous writer. I've already read his entire run of Scalped. Scalped was awesome. If you haven't checked it out, please do. This just feels like more of the same. Um, I think somebody, maybe Shakespeare, don't quote me, <laughs> Um, said that there's only like six stories in the world and that eventually you just keep repeating them over and over again This feels like more of the same from somebody like myself who's read Scout And like I said, I, I understand that everybody else on the entire interblog is saying that this is fabulous But you listen to us because we give you our honest genuine opinion on books And my honest genuine opinion is I like Southern Bastards, but not enough for me to keep reading it Next on the junk is Jericho Season 4, Issue 5, Cover, Skeet Ulrich. I'll level with you. I'm only reading this book because I'm reading this book. I think we all have been in situations where we have books on our sublist that we just continue to read because taking it off our sublist would somehow hurt our nerd style and we just can't do it. I loved Jericho, the TV show. I loved Season 3, the but this... This book took forever to come out, it didn't debut on time, it didn't even show up, I think until three or four months off of its scheduled pace. I liked it, only in that, it's, you know, somebody took the time to write me a story and hey, thanks, but man, what a clunker. Next up though, good stuff, Uber 12. I don't know what else I can say about Uber, it's just continues to be good. We actually have the debut in this book of the new um, Her Majesty's ship, Cohen. Uh, they've been teasing what Cohen looks like for a long time now. There's a full page splash. I'm not going to spoil that. It's it's still just one of the best books out there. Um, Gillen is an amazing artist and a wonderful Twitter personality. And I want to just focus on the last page here. I'm going to try and not spoil things or doing things backwards. This over here, this little story that he tells you, was one of the most honest, earnest things I've ever read in comics. I said it to him on Twitter, I'm saying it to him again to the YouTube. I, I've never read a back page of a comic that was more powerful than the actual book. Incredibly personal and very impressive stuff. But now, we must get to the pick of the week, as if there was any doubt. Of course, it's Amazing Spider-Man number one by Dennis Slottenstein. Umberto Ramasso, yeah, Dan Slott and Umberto Ramos, and a million other people, Christos Gage. There's backup stories for backup stories for backup stories in this book. You even get a copy of Inhuman number one just for buying the comic. It's $5.99, and for $5.99, I think you get almost 100 pages. More importantly, though, it's awesome. Um, Peter's life does not begin again as, you know, the happy go luckiness instantly. He's going to have to rebuild his existence because Doc Ock kind of destroyed it. And right off the bat, we're seeing storylines from Superior Spider-Man carry right in to the new Amazing Spider-Man storyline. Almost instantaneous, like a seamless movement. Which is great because so many times you'll have a relaunch or a reboot or a redo of a story and that's it. You just, you never worry about all that other stuff. This, there's lasting effects. And when it comes to comic books, we all want that. We want the lasting effects. We want to know what actually is going to happen. Because when a book debuts to when it ends, that's usually it. No, 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 not with this. This is one long storyline, similar to um, Johns' run on Green Lantern. It might have changed names, but it was the same story. Good on you, Dan Slott, and Umberto Ramos, I love your artwork. I really do. I'm going to go get all of Crimson next, because I need more of it. So that's it. Those are the reviews for the week. Hope you enjoyed. We have a couple more pieces of business to get to, and we'll be right back. Make sure you visit barbershopwindow.com, type in the promo code READPILE, and save 15% on your next order. Barbershopwindow.com, READPILE. Well, that's the READPILE. Rick, who are we thanking? Well, first and foremost, we definitely need to thank again uh, barbershopwindow.com for these sweet, sweet shirts. Uh, we 
cannot do this without our sponsors. Well, we probably could, but it makes it a lot easier when we have awesome sponsors. Uh, we also need to thank this week uh, the fellows over at the Illuminati. I mentioned them before. Go check out their uh, their book called uh, The Mad Monk. That was awesome. We need to thank uh, Simon Gotch, NXT up and coming Time Lordian superstar, Simon Gotch. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. Well, Gail Simone continues to be one of our fans. Fred Van Lenty, apparently everything I say is just tops as far as he's concerned. <laughs> Definitely need to thank Mr. Gillen again. Uh, he and I got into a really like cool Twitter conversation. Very short, very cool. Uh, if you need to check more of the read pile out, though, you definitely want to go to, uh, let's see. Uh, Jesse, we're going to need more logos. Uh, okay, okay, see, see, when you've grown, the shot screws up. No, lower, lower. That's better. We want to get the logos. Look at these logos. Stay on point. Mm -hmm. All right, a little lower, a little lower. Here we go. All right, check us out at the Read Pile. Check us out the Read Pile on Facebook, thereadpile.com. Wait a minute. Jesse. Jesse. Anything else that we're missing, Lauren? We got the Mad Monk in there. We got our boys at the Illuminati. Thank you, gentlemen. We got uh, we got Simon. He retweeted that photo of my awesome manly mustache. Let's see, we got Gail. Cause she's awesome, even though her books apparently this week were not up to your particular snuff. I cried a little before I had to say anything. I'm sorry. She really likes Gail's movie. I do. So it's we're fine. gonna keep reading. It's fine. Um, thank Fred. Cause Fred's awesome. Karen, I guess. I guess that's it. I mean, we did a little, we did a little, like, Japanese no theater. Yeah. I don't know what else we can do here, Ed. I don't know what else we can do here, except maybe say... Snail Hydra? Snail Hydra? Snail Hydra! I'm not affected by this.